You're listening to Just Three Clicks, and this is episode number 12 on entrepreneurship and business in a digital world. I'm here today with Jamie. How's it going? Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> I always look down at my laptop, but I forget that there's a camera as well. Yeah, I never look at the camera. No, nah, I don't weird. either, actually. If you, if you watch a podcast online, though, like on everyone YouTube. knows like a Joe Rogan one, they never look at the camera, do they? They look at each other, don't they? Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. We're not on the on the Rogan level, really. No. <laughs> so. Not yet, no. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So today we're basically, there's a couple of different interesting topics here that we've got to talk about. So background in the non-digital and digital workplace. So pretty much like we're going to be talking about how essentially like in 2020, COVID's basically turned the entire world upside down. Yeah. So I think essentially what's been highlighted with this pandemic is how much of an important role technology has played yeah. in our lives, especially now, but it has been for ages, but I think it's just become really apparent now. Um, and basically how it's going to grow over the next you know, couple of years and how businesses essentially need to be transforming and adopting and not just businesses, I think, but people, I yeah. guess, is what we're trying to get out here is like entrepreneurs, like how's, how's it changed basically? So I guess to start with like, maybe you should start like kind of like what's your i mean i know your story but for the for the, <laughs> for the people like listening in like what's your kind of background and yeah how how you basically got online i guess yeah so i was um as you know a salesperson cold caller one of those annoying guys everybody hates what were you saying uh well it was initially it was directory listening listings and these the, the i actually went through the stage of the growth of Google. So even before Google, it was Yahoo. And some people may remember that, some some might not, but Yahoo was the number one search engine. So when we, we used to basically sell, we had a directory, which back in those days was like your yellow pages, but an online version. And we'd sell like sponsored spots on it. So if you search for, I don't know, hairdresser in whatever city, our directory had come up at the top and we would list. It's actually, Back then, it's actually a cool business model, really, because they would just collate all the information on. They basically took the yellow pages and put it online, and then yeah. they had all the the businesses listed, and then they would sell sponsored listings, or I would sell. So you'd sell in, to whoever AA hair salon if you want to appear at the top when someone clicks through our ad on Yahoo at the time. Yeah. Um, you can pay us more or pay us monthly. I think it was because everybody everybody was free. And we'll put you at the top. And then what they did, again, another little smart thing. And we have digital tools that do this in our business now. But you used to be able to get these 0845 numbers. And yeah. they can, can, they, what they did, they had this massive library of 0845 numbers. And we'd give every business that had this sponsored listing one of these numbers. That would be what would be listed on the listing. So when they rang, when anybody rang that number, so somebody came through Google looking for a hair salon in Manchester or whatever, they clicked on that uh, our listing, have all the businesses there, and then the one we'd highlight at the top would have the 0845 number. And as soon as anyone rang that, which is people looking for a hair salon, it would whisper the name of our company so they knew it had come through that directory. So right, it, was, right. it was a way of tracking. Like now we have, I mean, in our business, we have Google Analytics and all of that. Back then, it wasn't, well, that wasn't there. There was no website, so it was just straight up if you call this number we can you can track every time you get a call through it so i started out selling that then got into well the company branched out as digital companies do like us as well more products selling websites selling seo and then that's how i ended up getting into i suppose the digital world i can't actually quite remember i mean you all google make money online i probably googled that came across a few forums yeah and i think in at the very beginning as well i remember i wanted to try and get an edge with so there was obviously as cold callers you're in a boiler room style you have 50 people in there i wanted to try and be the best in the room and i thought my leads is what's going to get me there so if i can find really, really hot leads that I'm calling, have got more chance of closing them. I'll be the top seller. Yeah. So what I did is I thought, well, the best way I can probably do that is to just go online, figure out how I can get these leads to come to me privately, and then I'll call them up when I'm in the office. So I built these little systems. Um, one of them I actually made into a little digital product at the time that I called Offline Stealth Tactic. <laughs> <laughs> God, silly name, but it was actually, it's a pretty smart idea. Um, so what I basically decided to do 
was create this opt-in page. So for anyone that doesn't know, it's capture email addresses leads. Yeah. And um, I made it using a website builder called Excite Pro. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I just figured out how to build something with this oh, Excite Pro. Cool, <laughs> and then I had a little opt-in box on there and I hooked up Aweber, I think it was at the time. And then what it was, was I think I'd, I think I focused on hypnotherapists at the time. And I was like, right, are you a hypnotherapist looking for leads? Are you a hypnotherapist looking for more business? If you are, enter your email here and I'll send you a doc or I'll send you a PDF or a guide or whatever on how you can find more leads online. And then I just, I, I didn't run it. There was no like paid ads or anything like that. There, there probably was at the time, but I didn't know how to use that. Yeah. So what I do is I just email hypnotherapist cold email them so i just send this email and say hey i put this guide together i don't know if you're interested in in using it and i'd link them to this excite pro page and then literally they just started to opt in and get this guide and the guide basically talked about how they could build a website and do this and do that and and again how to seo the website for the top page yeah. but it was quite brief in the explanation and to anybody reading it like a business owner at the time it had been Jesus, that's a lot of work. Like, and then at the end, it was if you want me to help you do this, I'll show you. I'll show you how to go about it in the quickest way. So Call even back number. then, you were basically getting people to Capturing essentially leads. come online. Yeah, pretty really. much. So, and then I'd take them leads. And then I'd call them up when I got into the office and they were just easy to close because I'd already pre-sold. And that's that. I mean, that's in a, a lesson in itself. We do that now, don't we? We give away yeah. free stuff and people are more likely to buy. But that's that's how I transitioned over to the digital world. And then I had this, because uh, I'd built that strategy, I decided to like put a little bit of a digital product together. I, I think it was a PDF and I put, I actually gave away some of the emails that I sent and showed people the guide I, I'd put together and basically said, if you want, if you're a cold caller or you want to generate business leads for whatever service, check out this offline <laughs> stealth tactic. Yeah. And, um, and I basically sold that online, I think for about $17 at the time. Right, right. Probably made about 30 or 40 sales or something <laughs> like that. But that's how I transitioned across with that product. Right, right. I mean, for me, it was like uh, I did sales as well for quite a bit. And my first job ever was actually like a door-to-door -door salesman. And it, <laughs> I remember this story. It's funny. Yeah, it was pretty bad, really. Like, <laughs> it was like I thought I was getting like a full-on like job. And then I was getting – I was making loads of sales as well. Like, I was quite – it might have been beginner's luck to be fair but i was quite good at it at the start got paid every week and it was like exciting and then one week i didn't make any sales and then i didn't get any money <laughs> and i was like how come i'm not being paid this week and the guy was like oh we didn't make any sales oh, so god that's when i realized 100 it was like commission yeah just full-on commission and, I, and then that i think that just like stunted my confidence and i was like oh shit and yeah. then all of a sudden i'm not making any sales do you think back in the day when you did sales that when you didn't when you were brand new you just f basically ran into it without overthinking it and yeah i remember that and then you start then you might get a few knockbacks or whatever and you start questioning your ability and then that's pretty it, much like i feel it. like that's what happened yeah like i picked it up after a while but it took a while to get back into it really because it was like Oh, this is just stressful now. How do you think your sales background helped you online? Did it help you in any way? Yeah, I think maybe not from like a technical perspective, no. but more from like mindset, I think. Yeah. Just of like, you just got to have a very gritty, very determined personality yeah. Yeah. to like, to do stuff what like What about this. writing copy? Yeah. yeah. That's one of the things helped. I've always thought, because obviously I've, I've held some webinars and, I feel I'm pretty good at that, and but we've all we've all written copy, and we still probably do it today. You know, emails here and sales copy here, and I I think being a salesperson initially helped me understand the whole point about you got to figure out a problem and then build yeah. a solution for that I, problem. I in got the taught sales the um, it was a book by a guy called Neil Rackham called Spin Selling. I've not read and that. What, one, no. Do you know what? Like the first ever course I made online. I call it problem implication solution result. Basically, that's my that was my thing like, yeah. that I brought into the video. Problem. What thing. was the second thing? Implication solution right, okay. and result. Now, yeah, yeah. where I got that from actually was this sales training thing I did when I used to work in a, another sales job. It was a different sales job, and they called it spin selling, and yeah. that was based on, I believe, uh, setting the scene. So you basically set the problem so that was like the s yeah the p was like sorry no 
I think it was S was solution. So the first talked about what it was. Then P was the problem. So they talked about the problem was. Then it was the implication. Yeah. I can't remember what the N was now, but it was it was basically based on this spin selling thing. It's actually a really good book for anybody that is in sales, to, and it's been recommended by lots of salespeople. So it's actually quite. Do good. you think with um, on that point as well with because obviously we transition from this offline world into online and obviously now with i mean even without covid everybody was moving digitally anyway it's probably just sped up a lot of people's thinking towards i need to do something online how how much do you think understanding how to approach copy because copies everything websites your emails whatever how big of a skill do you think that is to going online honestly like I think we we use that every day. Yeah, like, and we probably underestimate day. how big of a skill that is. Really, it's like now, like we're trying to shoot a video ad. Yeah, we couldn't do it if you didn't know how to write good copy. No, like, no, no. You're doing the upsell paths mm. in the app. Couldn't do it no. without the copy. But you, it's like second nature to us. But if you think, I, I just it just came to me then. If you think about when you first started, and I think about that little offline stealth tactic thing I called at the time. All that was was hype. Was just drawn out copy yeah of like i know your issue is you can't get leads here's how to get them but i can show you how to do it give me a call it's copy isn't it but i think it just solution. teaches you about identifying problems yeah like and we do that in all the marketing anyway like when we think about how we're going to sell the new videos for example mm. it's like we we understand how we need to sell it based on what problems we're solving yeah and i think it just comes from i think that is a base skill that everyone needs to develop like Hundred percent. If they're trying to come on, probably everyone has it as well, don't they? But we aren't realizing it. Yeah, I like I would say, if you know your it's business, you nature, can sell your it? business, can't you? Yeah. Like if you're a fitness trainer, you know everything you need to say. You just need to know yeah. how to set, like what structure to say it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah like definitely. I mean, I've seen some PT websites and things like that, and they're just terrible. <laughs> like the way they try to sell it. And yeah. It's like if you just said it a bit better, you could probably. Well, sell it's it. it's the whole thing about. If if you, if someone comes to your website and they're in and you've put yourself in the right place, and it's someone you could be a solution for, they're not interested in the business initially, are they? They're not interested in how professional you type in or whatever, or how how you kind of position your company. It's more about I've got an issue and just yeah. exacerbating that issue, and then I can fix it by doing this. Yeah, if you look at some of the earlier like. Even now, actually, if you look at like long form sales pages in in the yeah. internet marketing industry, the way they're written is like "Hello, friend." Yeah, like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it and was always that. What I mean by that yeah. is like, if you ever read one of these pages for, for anyone listening, it's like the whole idea is they try to personal, they, they try to become really personal with the way they talk yeah, to the yeah. prospect on the website. It's like almost like they've written it just for that one person. From um, the desk of Jamie Garza. Yeah. That's it. Oh, Very I think informal. that was like Gary Halbert. I think he's a huge co direct response copywriter. I think that's he, that's his style. I, yeah. I, st I went on um, a website not so long ago, a couple of months ago, that was based around him. I think we were working with a copywriter who was one of his or something to do with they've learned from him or, or through something that he's put out. And um, I thought, oh, I'll go and check that out because I learned a lot about him when I was starting out in IM. I'll check out what is, what you know, the websites and stuff are about now, and it's exactly the same. Yeah. And it's and every letter starts with from the desk of, <laughs> hey for hello friend, yeah. hey friend. So, yeah, I don't know. I think, I mean, for me, like the big thing for me was just I had a I really enjoyed making video content and that. Yeah. I also done a lot of sales. That's pretty much what my career was, was just sales, basically. So yeah. I tried to, like, combine the skills and say, well, I'll show you how to sell using a video, basically. Yeah, yeah. And that's what kind of... I think if you're it. selling as well, it's... I, I, well, being in sales in general is almost like running your own business, isn't it, in some ways? Because you've got to make the sales to make the money. If you've, you know, sat behind a desk doing just a job that doesn't require you to make any sales and, you know, you just ticking boxes or whatever or you're just working in a warehouse or you're a hairdresser or whatever you get you the sales are just there yeah. whereas when you're a salesperson you live and die by it so if you if you're not making sales you don't last long in the job and yeah and that you could one month one, one, one month you can be the top seller the next month you have a bad month and all of a sudden people are asking questions and your confidence yeah. goes it is like running a business in a lot of ways because you're constantly having to generate that new Mm. new I, like money. when i worked in recruitment that was the mindset there yeah it's like you have to build your desk like it's your business yeah, yeah. you've got no leads you've got no 
anything. It's literally like get on the phone, generate some leads, and go and close sales. Yeah, basically, yeah. And, you and if you're up. not making sales, you lose your job. Yeah, pretty basically. much. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It, I think it, it does build a lot of grit being in sales. I think naturally, if somebody is in sales, they're probably going to have a good base set of skills to go on. Like, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And yeah, so I mean, there's a point here on like why we decided to go a videos type thing and uh, essentially how, why we didn't do a bricks and mortar type business yeah. like for me it was just like i did do a bricks and mortar type thing i was trying to do like i was a videographer basically so yeah, yeah. it's not a shop but yeah. i was spending my time going around like i done birthday parties so why did you want to go online like i didn't i didn't think i didn't think i should have gone online really like what i wanted to do was create videos for like entrepreneurs basically yeah so that's why when i went online I was like, how to make money online and whatever. Like I was trying to find ways to make money on the internet. But in, whilst I was doing that, I was like, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll charge these people to make content for them. Yeah. So that's why I started working with Alex. And it yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll just shoot videos for you and, and whatever. But he was the one that just said, well, why don't you just make teach people online? Yeah, yeah. Like you'll save the, the headache of having to do all this stuff yeah. and you'll make those more money. So that's pretty much what got me creating courses basically it was just yeah I, well i as i say similar i was more i transitioned by set because i was selling websites seo anyway i just decided to do that from home but one thing that always kind of um I, well why i gravitated more towards digital stuff such as software like we've got now and software came a lot later software i wasn't interested in at first because it wasn't the thing but building digital products was the whole make money while you're in bed that's what i always thought look i can put together this yeah, digital yeah. product and i can have it online and it's selling online without me having to physically be on a phone that's that's how i initially thought i need to move this way and i tested it out and i just made i think on the initial thing i made i made more in like a week of, of selling digital uh, products than i did for the entire month selling websites and seo and i thought you know it's no brainer really so i just yeah. kind of moved it moved that way really i remember fantasizing about the whole idea of like going to bed and when i yeah. wake up there's like money there like and i thought it, it's just weird when you look at it now because if you think about it now i don't even i don't even look at what we make no, anymore. No, no like i never log on to, i used to log on onto our dashboards and that and, and like, see what's happening like, yeah, yeah. yeah but now it's just like it's just you know it's the feelings just kind of like not there anymore no <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's probably down to the size we've grown really i think so yeah, because I you just so. know everything's moving and then you get obviously we get updates from time to time but I'd, I'd like on a mindset basis as well i think it's that the excitement of creating money digitally means that and like you say when you thought i be, I could wake up in the morning, I've got money in my account because everybody's conditioned to think you've got to work nine to five, eight yeah. hours straight and that's how you get paid. And I mean, I, I've got, you know, friends in all different types of industries from tradesmen um, through to um, restaurant owners, um, people that, again, friends that own building firms and their lives are completely different to mine. So I, yeah. I feel lucky when I even though they all do really well for themselves, I, I still feel quite lucky that I went down the digital path way back when because it's, for me, I've, I've just got a lot more freedom in what we do, really. I yeah. mean, we're not, if we don't get a job tomorrow, like a builder who has a firm, if they miss out on a job tomorrow, that's that's their income. Whereas that isn't really a, as much of a worry for us anymore. It's more, no. you know, the, the platform is generating which platform is used by customers real customers isn't it so yeah and it doesn't need us there to push that on as much anymore yeah i think like it's when i first made, when i made my first sale online it was just like that's it now like i'm never mm. gonna go and try and work in a building like i say that sat in our building yeah. but, <laughs> like but what i mean is like i don't have to go and sell something in a shop yeah, or, yeah like yeah. make something physical and you know like there's so many things that we've had we've basically jumped right through like yeah, yeah. there's lots of businesses massive businesses that have you know it's like if you look at like a fragrance business it's like you've got to look at like all the supplies yep. you've got to look at where do you get all the perfumes made the oils and all the ingredients all that stuff there's all these different areas of that business that yep. need physical points and it's just like when you actually get a bottle of fragrance it's just a bottle yeah but the actual process to behind get it, it there is yeah. actually so intense and there's so many people involved with just getting that one bottle made yeah 
And like, and I'm only saying this because I know someone who works in fragrance. I'm not just like a, <laughs> like a fragrance person. But like, you know, it's it's just amazing how like we've basically not got any of that. No, like we've literally just got a website basically it's yeah like, yeah pretty much i mean there is people behind it obviously you've got the developers and designers yeah, and things, yeah. but i mean on a level of oper on an operational level it's just yeah it's just, just you know totally different isn't it everyone that's contributed to making that platform is just either sat in their bedroom somewhere yeah or, or in a coffee shop or yeah, just at home just, on you know, couch yeah got a little laptop and that's it now we obviously make stuff like content and things yeah, and, yeah. and we need to be physically there for that but yeah, again yeah. like we can do that anywhere. Yeah, really. yeah. I mean, we've shot content all over the world, mm. like from my phone, from big cameras, medium cameras, yeah, like anything. Webinars where you're basically just sat in front of a laptop. So we've, I think, like in terms of like why we've done it, I think that answers it. Really, it's like it's just easy. It like, is. It, it's easy. It's, yeah, it's easy for us now. I'd yeah. say because another uh, point I was just thinking about then as well, especially with. Because COVID has driven businesses that you wouldn't have thought would go digital to go digital. An example of that, of like businesses outside of your usual, like obviously a, a business like ours, we're an online platform, you create video, we're going to do well all the time. It's not, it's, although we have seasonal elements to it, they're, they're not, it's not really massively seasonal. Mm. Um, and we're online. If you think of like a restaurant, so t two examples of this, we've got one example where um, now everyone knows of uh, like Uber Eats and I think Just Eat we have here. I don't know if they have that around the world, but those apps you can order from any restaurant. Now, in where I live, you you can sometimes you'll go on Uber Eats and literally can't order anything to my house from on Uber Eats because no, there's no couriers that will bring it out to where I live. Yeah. And you get like an odd subway or something like that every now and again, but it'll be temp it'll just pop up every now and again. So what I noticed happened over the COVID period is is somebody local to me, I don't know who who owns it or who started it, has created these two apps, Morecambe Eats, Lancaster Eats, and they've basically built them up and they're being pushed everywhere. I see everybody, restaurants, takeaways, all saying, oh, you can find us on here, you can find us on there. And they and I, and I thought it was quite a genius thing what they did because they approached local pubs like to, to around me, traditional pubs that have been there for, you know, best part of 100 plus years, who, when you look at it, when you think of a local English pub, you don't think digital, you think, you know, you go in there, you have a pint of ale or whatever. Yeah. And it's, it's you know, everybody goes in, it's a community. They're, this Morecambe Eats, Lancaster Eats, have built this app and they've pulled pubs like that into this app. So they're now, so over the whole lockdown um, that happened, they are delivering food. And I, again, the local pubs to me, I'll often eat out with my family there. I was able to get that delivered at home or go around and pick it up and they'd be cooking it out of the kitchen. Yeah, now, yeah. those are businesses that would have never have done that. And there was one business in particular, um, just in the like the next village to me, who does pizzas. It's like an Italian. They've actually not reopened their restaurant since the lockdown because there's no point and they just do it all online now. And I thought that, that just shows how, I've gone on a bit of a tangent, but how COVID is basically driven some businesses that would once have never been digital to now think digital we should just stick to this now so it makes you think about what the future is going to look like like yeah. are we literally going to just be living off uber eats and not going out Maybe. as much and i think what what you're talking about there is basically like the middleman business yeah. like and i think with what's happening right now there has to be more middleman businesses because there's going to be a lot of people who don't know how to translate online. Exactly, yeah. And then there'll be, people, there'll be people like that that will say, well, you know what, I'll take your very dated business model and I'll put it online. Yep. And I think that's where things are going to go to. Like, if you look at Uber, like, they pretty much nailed it. Well, with, the ta ta taxis is one of the oldest. Yeah, it's literally like a classic It's been around, yeah, like, I mean, one of the oldest professions probably ever, isn't it? Yeah. And then, and yeah, like, I never even thought, I mean, I remember when I used the first, uber i think we were in the states because it wasn't even in the uk at the time definitely mm. not up where in the north i don't think up here it London, was it took a maybe. while for it to come up here but it's just a revelation and i know we don't have uber where i am like yeah. that's it's not possible to get an uber but when we go into manchester 
it's we use it all the time and we've obviously friends go in and they use it for the first time they're like it's incredible yeah like i know they well they've recently re-won the the license haven't they back in london because oh, they got it taken from right, them, right. but they've they've reinstalled it. But that's the prime example, pretty much yeah. what you said there. And then they've gone into the Uber Eats thing. There's no, re there's a reason why Amazon continues to dominate as well, mm. and it's because like you'll have business owners who have got shops and things like that that can't put their they they don't know how to go and like build a shop, build a website yeah, online. Yeah. So it's like we'll put it on Amazon. Yeah. So what you'll notice on Amazon is the trend is just like all these new products, yeah. new vendors. That are basically using the FBA program to basically just sell all the sell stuff. their shit online, and it's the same with um, and again something else I noticed a lot through uh, lockdown and COVID from uh, people sat at home had more time to think about what they're going to do. I mean, I saw a comment only last night of somebody commenting on a a post to do a, something a government a government post about some restrictions, and someone had commented said on the actual post saying lockdown was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I'd, I was just reading through the comments and it was a woman that had a craft that she'd never used the craft before or did just like a hobby at home, yeah. got put into lockdown, had a, more time on her hands, furloughed, and basically has started to build out her hobby into a craft business. And I, I don't know where, what she'll have used, but the sites like Etsy where okay. you can have a skill, like you might be great at knitting, you might be great at going and grabbing even little things like sand and pebbles from a local beach. I've seen people doing this, building out really cool things like ornaments and whatever. And they're selling them on Etsy and building full businesses out of it. And you've got the the likes of social media as well, how, how big it is now. I mean, everybody's seen this on Facebook. I mean, everybody's selling something on there right now. You've got people selling, I mean, perfume's a big one. There's like the perfume thing going around at the minute. Um, there's people selling... I mean, you've probably seen the sweet packages people have been doing. People have just decided to think, what could I put together, put online and sell? And yeah. I suppose right now, if you think about when we first started doing all of this digitally, how much harder it was to put your stuff online and sell it than it is now. I mean, you couldn't put yeah. an e-commerce store online easily back in the day. Nah. You, you would have needed I remember making designer. my first ever blog and yeah. how much work it was just making And how basic it will have looked as well, I bet. Yeah. Not, like, as, You'd as look you for these look really now. great themes, and you'll yeah. be like, oh, that theme looks amazing. And then when you load it <laughs> it's on just WordPress, basic. it's just like this stupid table, basically, <laughs> oh, on, God. on your homepage that says, hello world. Well, back in the day, I used to, because I sold websites, I never used to build the websites myself. I used to have an outsourcer um, via Upwork that used to help me build the websites out and literally every website I sold was HTML. There was no WordPress. Yeah. It, WordPress was starting to become a thing and more uh, mainstream back then, but initially it was HTML, everything. And to put that into perspective for somebody coming online right now, wanting to sell something, whether it be their own service, their own business, there is literally no better time to do that with where the world is but you couldn't have it any easier than it is right now to be able to do that. And you don't even have to invest that much money. I mean, take videos as an example. How, could you have ever created anything like what that our platform allows you to create for the price no. that you can do it? You would have spent hundreds, if not thousands, on on creating just one of the things you can do in, yeah. in, in your entire license. So it's incredible, really. But that just opens an opportunity, and I suppose those that want to go and run and get it will get it. Yeah. I mean, there's a note here just saying, like, essentially, your website basically is your shop. Like, that's yeah. how that's how it is now. Your, you know, the, the online landscape is pretty much your high street. You have your traffic, and you know, we that's how we basically have to look at the world now. Um, there's a little quote here from Bob Swan, Intel CEO. He says, "Today we're witnessing what will be remembered as a historic deployment of remote work and digital access to services across every domain, including medicine, education, government, entertainment." And more in the coming weeks and months, services will be further digitalized as a creative as the creativity of a massive work from home population gets growing. So that, like, I mean, this is what businesses have to start understanding. Yeah, now. yeah. It's like you know, we we basically had this initial lockdown period where I think businesses were like kind of reliant on the government funding and the schemes to essentially allow them to like see themselves through the period. Yeah, yeah. But there's still businesses that have probably lagged and not done anything yeah, yeah, to actually yeah. catch up. Because now, where we are now is, you know, it's October now, creeping up to Christmas. Like, the chances of us, like, basically reverting back 
are pretty high. Like, so for anyone listening in the UK now, we have a a tiered system of lockdowns now. So you know, we we have more larger populous lockdowns based on the region that we're in. So if that's how it's going to work everywhere, I don't really know. But that's having an impact on businesses yeah. again. And yeah. if they're not ready now, then yeah. it's just, you know, the problem's just going to keep rolling and rolling. And, you know, it, it, people basically have to take advantage of of that opportunity. Yeah, I think being prepared as well, because I, I've I've seen, so since um, we've had things like lockdown, when we had the lockdown and we came out of lockdown, then it was, right, everyone move back. Let's get the economy moving. But there's all these restrictions. And I feel sorry on some businesses. I mean, we've been been quite lucky with the business we're in we've had to adopt a few things but in general with what we do we've not we, we don't have to get intense with it but you take any, like the hospitality industry which is huge and and probably one of the biggest affected um some of the restrictions that they've had thrown at them you can tell when you go into different places restaurants bars whatever that they don't really know 100 percent what it should be like yeah. and those that have been more prepared just give a better experience i mean i've i've i go out a lot with uh, you know friends and and family to eat um tons i mean as everybody does around the world but there's places i've been in that i would never go back to now because of some of the some of the way they've handled the restrictions yeah, yeah. it's just not it's just not a really good environment to go to it's just not enjoyable i think it was there was one place i went to watch um, football being a newcastle fan we were on tv met a couple of my mates um and went and watched a game and the experience was terrible. We, we, we all said while we're there, I'm never coming back to watch football here. And it was a well-known pub in my area. And it's like, they just got it wrong with what they were, and just little things they did, they just didn't didn't prepare and do it properly. Yeah. And then you're going somewhere else who is a, another place who will be much more prepared. And you don't really notice a difference other than having to wear maybe a mask to go and sit down. The experience in there hasn't changed from what it was before. And I think those businesses that have prepared a little bit better um, and much are, are going to probably more thrive than... I think that's where the competition is now. Yeah, it like is, Like, yeah. if you've got two restaurants and one's adopted correctly and the other hasn't, yeah. that's it, isn't it, basically? Yeah. Like you've, and the way that that's going to happen now is basically being on trend. Yeah. Like, there's a note here on, like, customer behavior and how, essentially, like, users' behavior on devices now is obviously so different to what it was just eight months ago yeah yeah like i remember when lockdown started and i got an alert on my phone about three weeks like three weeks or four weeks in my phone basically popped this thing up saying your usage has like doubled gone up yeah yeah like and you know you need to like consume your battery and you need to preserve your battery doing this and that and it's like that's what everyone will be doing yeah like we've obviously noticed this with our advertising efforts so you know we run a lot of paid advertising on that and the cost for acquisition is increasing because the amount of businesses that are going online and competing with all the traffic that's online now and that's literally just a case of people spending more time yeah, yeah. on their phone and browsing and businesses are trying to keep up with that now so i don't know like from an i mean the point we're trying to get to here on from from the notes here is like if you're an entrepreneur not even if you're a business but if you're an entrepreneur like how do you approach this now because how we did this 10 years ago yeah it's probably a bit different because we weren't thinking about that yeah really like we were just like well we just want to go online yeah but now it's like you have to go online yeah basically yeah, yeah. like no one's going to go and open a shop now in fact i know someone that did go and open a shop um in ireland and they were open for like three weeks and now it's closed like just why just because they not lockdowns like the, 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 there's, there's restrictions in their industry so they can't be open so they've spent a tremendous amount of money basically getting the shop together, been planning it for a year, like, you know, all this energy's yeah, yeah. gone into this thing and now it's like just a sorry, complete waste of money. Close, yeah. That that I feel sorry for a lot of business owners that have gone and done that because there'd be no way, you know, back prior to lockdown that you could have ever have predicted what happened. Ever. Yeah. There, there's absolutely unless you know you, you know from the inside government, you know what's gonna happen and the restrictions that are gonna be put in place. It was just no so one quick, could have predicted like... any yeah, exactly. Like I remember sat sitting there, we've said it a few times and it was like oh, this you know, we were going away, we were locking down for two weeks. Surely can't go on longer than a month. <laughs> Surely like the kid I, I remember when um my daughter come back from school, her school shut. It's like, yeah, they'll be back in next month. 
And then it was like, yeah, no, they'll, be, they'll definitely be back in May. Surely they're not going to be off until the following school year. And they didn't go back to the... Fo- I just, I can't, when I think back, and I think about this year as well, it's now coming towards the end of October. It's over, basically. What has happened to the year? Yeah. What has happened to the year? The last time we went away, m- me, you, and David on a business trip was over a year ago. November last year, wasn't it? October, I think, I think October, it was. Was it? Yeah, Barcelona. Yeah. And that oh. was the last time we went. Now, if you think about how long ago that was, that was one year ago. I can't believe that. That's incredible. It's amazing that, considering how much we actually used to go away and, and be away. like It just shows how much this year has just gone. Not in a flash, it's more of like a blur, really. I don't... Yeah. I'm just glad. I mean, our business has come on leaps and bounds this year and, and has grown dramatically, but... I feel we've lost a full year almost of yeah of just like indecisiveness with what's happened with it's not really challenging our business, like but yeah with we in general you know we're obviously going through a bit of an investment process and stuff and it, 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 it leaves so many questions in the air about like well, should we do this now should we do that and yeah. it's like it, it makes it makes making it makes making decisions very difficult yeah uh, I think if you're an entrepreneur now like you've just got a spot where the opportunities lay you know like everyone is going online right now like we actually made a course in fact which is probably worth mentioning yeah. like called expert which we launched i think about a month after the lockdown yeah 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 it was basically designed to show people if you've got an offline skill like if you're a fitness trainer a chef or a guitar player anything anything yeah. like it will basically give you an insight into how to actually you know go online so if you are that kind of person just go to expert.videos.com and you can check that out. But point is, is like right now, our challenges now, an entrepreneur's challenges now are different to what we had. I think in a, in a way, we were quite lucky in that there wasn't this massive wave of like online business then. Yeah, so everybody's coming online now. There's more competition, I would say, yeah, for people looking for them opportunities. But then it's easier to get set up and moving now than yeah. it was when, I mean, there's obviously a trade-off, isn't there? But the 100%... But one one thing I've always thought, I think that's a really good good point with um, when you're coming online for the first time and starting something brand new online is um, commitment to, to continuing to do it. Because I think it's really easy. I know, there's, I mean, over the years, I've started so many different digital focused product businesses. Um, they've, some of them have took off, some of them haven't. And I think it's easy to start an onla- something online, whether it's an online business, a digital business, business or you take your business online if you're you know brick and mortar your restaurant you go online for the first time it's easy initially to get excited and then you you kind of go through a stage where it's like excitement that's all you can think about it's, you you know this is the thing to do but then you see and it, it must be the same for everything that moves online you have this period where it doesn't quite go as well as you expected so you might have a bit of a lull you might might not take off as as what you expected it to do. You had these visions of grandeur and all that, and it just doesn't happen. And a lot of people at that point give up yeah. and think, you know what, this isn't this isn't going to work. I'm going to scrap it. But I think what you've got to do at that point, the ones that win are the ones that step back and think, well, why did when I first started this thing, what did I start it for? What was the the vision? Is that vision is what I was think what I wanted it to be? is that still viable? If it's still viable, you've got to keep chasing it. And then though it's almost like a race with other people and people start dropping off at these points. And then the one yeah. that can kind of just continue pushing through and through is the one that, that ends up being successful with it. And th- I've, I've seen that personally through some of the things we've done, some of the things I've done um, in lots of different industries. It's like videos, like mm. when we went to market, okay, we were probably one of the first ones that done this. Yeah. But we had other people that made the same thing. Yeah. Like yeah. not very long after, probably like eight months later, yeah. there was a competitor, but they just they didn't continue. Yeah, if you look back then as well, we had we had probably a handful of competitors that almost, I mean, they didn't, you know, rip it off and, and try and copy everything. But I mean, there was certain ones that were copying things, like blatantly copying, copying the way the templates looked, copying sales copy copying sales videos but if you look at every single one of them that has done that 
they're just they're just nowhere near where we are now and i think that's yeah. that shows we've just stuck to to what what we what the vision was and just continue chasing that and don't really worry about what anyone else is trying to tell you or what anyone else is doing yeah because you will hit that point 100 percent. you will hit a point where you think is it worth carrying on i think as well like focusing on the right things like mm. we've talked about this so many times but it's like you know instead of spending like a week trying to get like the best looking instagram profile yeah just go and get a customer, basically. Exactly. Like, just go and yeah. find someone that's actually willing to give you money. Whether you've got a website or not, it's kind of irrelevant. It's like... Yeah, 100%. If you're a fitness trainer and you can deliver some coaching on a Zoom call, get someone to pay you $500 to go and do it online. Yep. That's so much better than having a website with a blog and articles and videos and all of that, but no customers. Yeah. Like, 100% all the time. That's what I always tell anybody that's getting into this. I know someone right now that's trying to build a clothing brand. And it's like they're like you that's know, a bit tougher isn't it it is, it you is pretty have, tough. you have to like, have the brand looking right don't you yeah it's already a hard industry but they're like you know what's the what should my about page say and shit yeah, and i'm yeah. like who's buying the clothes yeah yeah like have you got someone actually willing to buy and it's like well nah and it's like well that's where your focus yeah. needs to be then like you know that i think for me that's always going to be the biggest advice for anyone starting out is look right now we've got such a good opportunity like there's a very weird market yeah in that everybody is health conscious People want to know if they're safe, have they got a virus or not. You know, they want to cover their faces and whatever else. There's all all kinds of opportunities. Like the fragrance world right now, there's a company that's just basically released this. Well, to give you an idea, so if you're into fragrances, you will go into a fragrance shop and you'll get one of those little sticks, spray it, and yeah. then you smell it. Can't do that now. No. Like you can't touch How the bottles you anymore. You can't, can you? I didn't no, even... you can't touch the bottles. You can't do anything. So what this company's done is they've they've launched a subscription model for people to basically pay every month and they send samples to them every month like yeah. through the post right okay fucking sick idea yeah it's good it's that. such a good idea yeah. it's like normally you don't even pay you, you wouldn't pay for tasters but now people are paying for tasters to have them posted because it's safer yeah yeah and it's like it's just I such a simple think thing about little things like that that you can't you won't be able to do that easily it's just enough. bizarre like how the world's changed like it's i tell you what's really fucking stupid like i went to high street yesterday i forgot my mask in the car oh, right no. so <laughs> I'm walking around the high street, like going into all these shops, and I'm like, oh, oh can, I, can I just come in and get a mask? And they're like, no, no, you need a mask to come in. And I'm oh like, God. Yeah, but hang on, I can't get a mask without coming in. Yeah, yeah. So I've literally had to walk all the way back to my car to get a mask and then come, like a 15 minute walk back to my car. I had a similar experience. Luckily, it was in um, a local shop to, to me. So I, I know the owner of the shop, and there was no one in the shop at the time, but I, pulled, I had to pull me uh, to post something. I pulled my t shirt over my nose. But I had that awkward walk where I'd had to walk with my T-shirt halfway up my belly. <laughs> so I'm coming out of the shop like that with people coming in because I had no mask. So I just thought, well, I'm not, I can't drive home. I've just got to pull my T-shirt up here. Yeah. And I, luckily there was no one in the shop, but it was awkward coming out. But it's like, those are opportunities, aren't they? It's yeah. like, fuck it. Like, go and make an app that reminds you to put a mask on when you leave your car. I don't know how it works, yeah, but it's just yeah. an idea. Like, I'm yeah. not saying that's, that's what you should do, but it's like, that's how you spot opportunities. Yeah. It's like, look at what's happening and go and capitalize on it somehow. There's there, another a, a good one that I was chatting to a, a mate of mine who's in the property um, industry, a state agency. And I, I, it's surprising how that's changed because when you buy a house, you think, well, you want to go and look around the house. You want to walk around it and you want to actually go in there, have a look, is there any issues? But they're now seeing people are not even doing that anymore they you can still do it but they're seeing they're not and they're offering video walk rounds Virtual and he was games, asking yeah. me about that to see you know can our software build these walk rounds and he was asking for some advice so there's an, an opportunity there there's there's a massive industry there that are in need of that they will probably be in need of that more than ever before soon as well because it'll just become normal God, to think why are we not why are i want we not a video that? thing well it's a bit of a tough one because a video walk around slightly different from mm. animation and but that's that's a huge thing and and they're even going to move to um things like all of your your contracts for you know lettings and things like that is all done digitally where it's always been you print out all this all of these forms they've yeah. moved to digital through this period and yeah. i think that's well our accountants have all done that and previously you'd have to go in and they'd have to come out with all this paper stacks of it i mean yeah. that's that's one good thing for the environment i suppose yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah that's pretty much um that's pretty much the episode is you know i think 
We There's should do an episode opportunity. in the future, you know, on good business ideas that have come to light now. Yeah. I think that would be quite interesting. Yeah. All right. Let's put that in. One in deal, isn't it? So <laughs> maybe, maybe get that one on, on the cards as well. Um, cool. All right. Anything you want to add on just generally the COVID thing? Any last minute thoughts, ideas? Not really. Just um, I think if, if you're out there thinking, I need to move to the digital thing, one other thing, actually, with that point as well, don't. Uh, it kind of builds on the point you made about you know just go out and make the sale. Don't worry too much about building this and doing this and doing that. I think when you go into something brand new or you're gonna go on, go and follow something that you've not done before, and going digital for a business, you know, would fall into that bracket. You can spend a ton of your time learning and reading and watching videos and listening to this and listening to that and going and figuring out what's this expert saying, what what are they saying? And you can sometimes consume yourself with that much information about what you should and shouldn't do that you just paralyze yourself into basically getting started. And I think information paralysis, I think, I, yeah. I don't know if that is even a thing, but I know sometimes you can spend too much researching something before actually doing it. And I think sometimes you just need to do it and fail as you're doing it really. And pick it up as you go along yeah yeah i agree with all that i think only thing for me is literally look right now if you look at any business like businesses solve problems like what you've got to look for is what one of those problems is not a digital solution right now yeah like what's what businesses are still doing the physical thing and what can i do to you know make an impact there and you know what like it doesn't have to be this big thing like this big solution it can be tiny yeah it can yeah. like sometimes the smallest things are are generally the ones that actually stick and that people need the most is just the really simple solutions and that's what that's pretty much it for me so yep cool all right well hope you guys enjoyed that episode um, and hope everybody's safe out there during this very odd strange time but we'll be back uh, in a couple of weeks with the next episode mm -hmm.